Go to uh, Matthew chapter 21 as we're preaching through the book of Matthew, one of the most important books in the Bible. And as we've gone through this narrative in Jesus' life, and of course Matthew trying to help us get that Jesus is the king of the Jews, um, we're at this point where this is the last week of Jesus' life on earth. And uh, so we saw that sure enough, he had that triumphal entry into the city where they proclaimed him, Hosanna, Hosanna to the king, and the people were happy to see him and uh, have him come and riding in on the colt of an ass. Uh, but then all of a sudden as he's teaching in the temple, what's the first thing he did when he got in that temple? He cleaned it up. He got rid of the money changers. That was the first thing that he did is he cleaned the temple. And so then we see that Jesus uh, raised a question. Uh, they came to him raising a question of by what authority did he do those things in cleaning that temple. And so last week we saw that he addressed that and told them, well, okay, he says, I'll tell you what, I'll answer your question with a question, and you tell me the authority by which John operated, then you'll know the authority by which I'm operating. Mm -hmm. But they said, well, we can't tell you. Again, they couldn't tell him because... Uh, they didn't want to admit the truth. And so that was the first question. And now today we see the second question. And Jesus is going to have a third question for him too in a minute. Because again, he's going to drive it home to them. If, if they're awake, they'll get it. But if they're not awake, they ain't going to get it. And I'm so glad at least that uh, Joseph of Arimathea got it. I'm so glad that at least uh, uh, Nicodemus is going to get it. <laughs> but most of them aren't going to get it. And, you know, we've preached this. How many hundreds of times have you heard about the life of Jesus? And how many times have you heard about Jesus cleansing the temple? You know Jesus cleansed the temple, right? Twice. He, he cleaned it twice. Mm -hmm. Once when he began his ministry. Mm -hmm. And here, as he's at the end of his ministry now, yeah. he cleanses it again. And yet, as we're so busy just trying to zoom in on, well, Jesus wants cleanse the temple that it goes yeah, just like a you know we, we miss it we totally missed it I missed it now listen boys and girls I I, I pity you people have to hear me say this so much I am 70 years old and I'm really not complaining too much but I'm just saying I'm surprised I'm just saying I'm surprised <coughs> that here I am 70 years old I got saved when I was 9 years old started preaching when I was 17 and I really haven't quit preaching I'm still preaching, but how come I've never heard nobody say this? So I'm going to say it. Are you ready to write it down? I'm, I think it's pretty profound. Jesus cleansing the temple was proof that he believes the church is not a business. Amen. Amen. A church is not a business. Jesus Christ believed that for these fellows to make his father's house, make a house of merchandise out of it, he's going to say they made it into a den of thieves. And Jesus just said the incorporated church for business is a den of of thieves! Right. How come this is the first time I've ever heard that? Right. How come I'm the first preacher I've ever heard say that? But it's clear as a nose on your face. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's as clear as a nose on my face. You know, it went right past me until today. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, that is profound. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make sure I put that in the next newsletter. Because... <laughs> We, we read what Jesus did, but we don't pay attention to it. And we don't get what Jesus was saying. Right. But aren't we proving a point? Right. By being non-registered as we are. Amen. And starting the non-registered Baptist Bible Fellowship. And can't we drive this thing home right here? Mm -hmm. Even what Jesus is saying to us right here. Because Jesus still has two sons. Just like we're going to show you right here. Wow. This is, this is just so profound. 
Because again, we know his main emphasis, Matthew's emphasis, throughout Matthew's been what? Kingdom of heaven, kingdom of heaven, kingdom of heaven. But all of a sudden he throws in here, kingdom of God. Because we know the kingdom of God is the main thing. That condition of your heart, you being saved first, so you get in on the kingdom of heaven later, is the main thing. See? But that's the difference of Matthew than Mark and Luke and John. But today, whereas he has been talking plenty about the kingdom of heaven, now again, Jesus is going to switch gears on them and he's going to emphasize their heart condition and being born again, being saved in the kingdom of God. See? So let's stand out respect the word of God and we'll read these few verses. Matthew 21, 28 to 32. Now, the real question is a question of authority. At least they got that right when they come to G ask Jesus, Hey, Jesus, man, you're running around here like you're some kind of authority, like you've got some kind of authorized version of the Bible or something. And so, uh, where did you get this authority? Because it sure makes our man-made authority look puny and sick. And it did. So now, Jesus continues, see, amen, verse 28. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. Proud, obstinate fellow, smart aleck. Amen. I will not. Probably the younger of the two. I always think of that being the younger of the two. Amen. Mm -hmm. I will not. Them younger kids seem like they get away with a lot more than them older kids did. Right. But afterward, he repented and went. So it showed he really had a good heart. His heart was right. Mm -hmm. Though he put his mouth in gear first and got a little emotional. And sometimes we do that. Usually that's what screws us up the worst. We, we're thinking with our feelings and we don't think it through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But once he studied about it, he come through. All right. I will not. But afterward he repented. And see, this is the key word of what Jesus is saying. Even though... Oh, John the Baptist, you know, John the Baptist preached repentance. Mm -hmm. He wasn't one of these easy believism. Right. Only believe, only believe, all things are possible, only believe. No, no, he preached repentance. Afterward he repented and went, and he came to the second and said, Likewise, and he answered and said, I, I go, sir. Oh, so prim and proper. I go, sir, and went not. Whether of them twain did the will of his father. They, as they say unto him, the first. Jesus saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him, and ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward. See? that ye might believe him. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, again, thank you for this book. And thank you for the book of John that over 100 times <laughs> tells us, believe. You need to believe. It's a matter of belief. <laughs> and help us to believe your word. Know we can trust it, Lord, because it is our authority. And in Jesus' name, we thank you now. And amen. 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 So again, we, we've got the context. Amen. Mm -hmm. We understand what Jesus is saying and why he's saying it here. Hallelujah. A certain man had two sons. <laughs> and so Jesus uses this parable to bring it home. A parable of a man and his two sons concerning the kingdom of God. See, he switched now on them to talking to him about the kingdom of God. So there's a real difference in the Bible between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. And in John chapter 3, the Bible tells us a lot about being born again, being saved. And how this is the key to seeing the kingdom of God or entering the kingdom of God. Amen. John chapter 3 verse 1, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus a ruler of the Jews, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, 
for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Because again, God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, which he's going to say in John 4. <laughs> and, uh, and so it's an invisible kingdom. It's a spiritual kingdom. It's of the spirit. It's invisible. Whereas the kingdom of heaven is a visible kingdom as all three heavens that the Bible speaks of are real physical, visible places. You can look up see the birds fly in the heavens. That's one of the heavens. You can look out there in outer space and see there's sun, moon, and stars in outer space and a lot of other uh, rocks and funny things and meteors and comets yep. and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. And nebulae and oceans of water and all kinds of stuff up there in, 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 in the second heaven. And then there's that third heaven where Jesus is literally physically sitting at the right hand of the Father with a rainbow around the throne. And all these 24 elders and the angels and all the other stuff that the Bible says is there, as well as the new heaven, new earth, new Jerusalem, that will be coming down out of heaven. And all is real physical, visible places. So to get to those places, you better get into the spiritual kingdom first. Amen? Right. And so we see this parable of a man and his two sons concerning the kingdom of God. Here the Bible explains it in John 3. Jesus is talking to Nicodemus. And he tells this old bird that he's got to get born again. And he's scratching his head. What are you talking about? Born again? I got born once. Verse 4. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. So this born again, born of the Spirit thing is something so much more than just flesh. And it's so much more than just being born into a fleshly, physical world. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must. So it must, must be true. It's kind of a musty old message, but it's still true. Ye must be born again. Amen. Amen. You must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth. Now here, he, Jesus is going to help us understand it by, again, using something of a parable and using the idea of the wind. Of the wind, it kind of goes where it wants to go, doesn't it? Yep. And yet you can't look at it and really tell for sure where it's moving. Nope. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof. You can f figure out where the wind went when it comes by and comes through. Yeah. But you can't, by looking, tell where it's going. Because mm -hmm. it's invisible. It's a spiritual kingdom. And so it is with this being born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, thou hearest the sound thereof, yeah. but canst not tell whence it cometh and whether it goeth. So is everyone that's born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Now, see, he's an old man, sort of like I am. And he's thinking, here he's been a rabbi in Israel, and he's smart, he's got a master's degree, and yet uh, he don't even know what Jesus is really saying. How can these things be? Verse 10, Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And that's why most of the people just can't get Jesus at all, because again, he's so much above us, being sent down from heaven. And he's telling us so much heavenly things that we can't even get geocentricity or just so many things. <laughs> we can't figure out what the forbidden fruit is. We can't figure out nothing. We're dumb as a bo box of rocks. Mm -hmm. But yet if you love the Lord and believe his book and believe what you read, pretty soon the Bible starts unlocking itself. Amen. Verse 13, And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. 
And that's another wonderful thing to think that when Jesus was talking to Nicodemus, he says, I'm talking to you here and I'm right here right now, but also I'm not just here, but I'm up in heaven too. <laughs> See, that's a concept that he knew that Nicodemus needed to learn because he didn't quite have it down yet that mm -hmm. God is all-knowing and all-present. Amen. But he is. He's omnipresent as well as omnip omnipotent, all-powerful, right. and omniscient, all-knowing, and all-powerful. And what is the other one? I'm um, the present. Always present. Always present. And now he illustrates it again. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man, speaking of himself, be lifted up. Amen. That whosoever... Now who's that mean, whosoever? Who's that mean, J.J.? Whosoever, who's that mean? Anybody, huh? Whosoever. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal. What's that mean? Eternal life. Eternal life. See? That's speaking about that's speaking about a God likeness. God is an eternal being. Man has a beginning and an end. But God never had a beginning and never has an end. He's eternal in the heavens. Amen. He's eternal in the heavens. Amen. See, that's a quality that is God alone. Right. And yet you can have that God, that Godness of life. Because if you will believe on Jesus, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. That is what we call a quality of life. Right. It's not just a quantity. Now, you also will have a quantity of life, just as sure as God is, is always going to exist. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And you, yeah. you see, if you get saved and you get that eternal life, and you guess what? You got an everlasting life. It's a life that lasts forever. Amen. There's no end to it. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. saved. So are you saved? <laughs> you need to get saved if you aren't saved. Because you need to be saved and Jesus come to get people saved. And the Father wants you to be saved. And that's why God sent John the Baptist to start preaching for Jesus six months before Jesus showed up. And John the Baptist was his forerunner. So like this man here has his two sons. You see them there? See, there's the one son. He's kind of younger. He's not, he's not, he ain't too interested in doing anything his old man tells him. But the old, uh, his older son, oh, yeah, he's so proud of him. You know, oh, yes, sir. Uh, oh, yes, sir, you want me? Yes, sir. I'm going to go, yes, sir. But he didn't mean it, gas bag. You know, he's got a little education. He's been around a little longer. He knows how to say the right thing, but he don't do the right thing. A manipulator. Yeah. <laughs> so the father commands his first son to go to work in his vineyard. He says, I will not. He's obstinate. He later changes his mind. He waits. The father also commands his second son to work. He says, I will, I will sir. But he never goes. <laughs> yeah. The first son did what his father wanted. Amen. And that's the same thing. God's kind of looking for some sons and daughters that'll do what he wants them to do too. Amen. Uh -huh. He's got some that won't do it. Oh, they can talk a good talk. They got education. But they won't do something because their heart's not right. See? Jesus was driving it home, man. Amen. Amen. What a beautiful little story here. So we see, number one, that yes, but think ye, a certain man had two sons. He came to the first. Son, go work today in my field. Vineyard. He said, I will not. But after he repented and went, that's what the Lord wants. Amen. There's a bunch of harlots and dope heads, crazy people. They acted on their feelings. They screwed up first time. But thank God they heard John preach. Thank God they said, yes, sir, sir, yes, sir, we're going to repent. Yes, sir, we want to go to heaven. 
And hallelujah, a bunch believed. But them Pharisees, when they watched them change lives and stuff, they said, well, I can't deny they definitely got to change life. But I'm so glad I've never needed change. I'm so glad I, I was raised right and I'm educated. You know, I've been yeah. sent to the best schools and I got the best education. Right. Mom, I'm mama called, daddy sent. They're so cocky and sure of themselves, aren't they? At least, uh, you know, we know all about Moses, and we know who sits in Moses' seat, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> he came to the second, said, likewise. He answered, said, I go, sir, and went not. See, he knew the right language. He's got the right lingo now. He's very polite. But his heart ain't right. <laughs> but the first son did what his father wanted. Whether them twain did the will of his father. See, that's the question. Are you doing the will of the father? Many people can't find no father. They're not sure. Maybe God's a her as far as they're concerned. According to their Bible, according to their preacher, according to their minister, whoever she is. But the point is the repentant sinners enter the kingdom of God before the sacramentalists do. Amen. <laughs> there are those totally trusting in those sacraments and in those holy things and those holy acts and those exercises of certain feasts and how to dress and how to trim your nails and how to clean the dirt under your fingernails and how to wash. There's the self-righteous religionists and those who make those their false professions that they know God when they don't know him at all. Right. If they knew him, they'd, know, they'd known his son. Like Proverbs said, what is his name? What is his son's name? Well, when they'd come, when he come, some knew who his son was, but some didn't know him as his son. Some of them are still waiting on the son to come. Uh -huh. You know, oh, soup is all get out. Here they and their forefathers for thousands of years claimed to have known and studied the scriptures. And yet, <laughs> they still don't know who his son is. So we see this second point of the sinners enter the kingdom before the religionists do. Amen. Jesus said, okay, verily I say to you that the publicans and harlots go into the kingdom of God before you do. So praise the Lord. John was out in public. John was a street preacher. He preached in the open air because he couldn't get in the buildings. They wouldn't. They didn't want him. <laughs> they didn't need him. So then third, we see the reason. Traditionalists did not recognize John the Baptist preached by the authority of God. John preached Jesus was the Christ of God. As well, the Holy Scriptures taught he is. Either you have the authority and you believe the authority or you reject Jesus and God's authority. Amen? Right. And these idiots rejected it because they thought they were because of their strict keeping of the traditions of their fathers. But John preached righteousness. John preached that sinners needed to believe on the Lord. And sinners did believe John and John's word. And so the Jewish authorities saw changed lives but still did not repent themselves and believe individually themselves on the Jesus that John was preaching. Amen. Amen. They did not believe, and therefore they did not repent, and so Jesus nails it for us. So we're learning some things. Again, if we backed it up a little bit, so we're learning, okay, the question was the authority of John. Where did John get his authority? And the point was these people wouldn't repent and accept the authority that John had, and neither would they accept the authority of Jesus but Jesus proved it because these people were believing on Jesus and when Jesus was there they all loved him and fell in love with him became his disciples and followers so much that there was even 70 that would believe and follow him and pretty soon by the time you get the day of Pentecost next thing you know it's 120 and then it starts taking off after that it becomes hundreds and hundreds and so and we're still here following him today Amen. hallelujah and so some still believe don't they and that was the issue. The last line there says, Repented not afterward that ye might believe him. And so that's the issue. So let's turn quickly to John 3 then, where I stopped. And now we'll pick it up at John 3. Let's pick it up at like uh, 25. John 3, 25. Good place to pick it up, I think. Uh, let's see here. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. 
And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bear witness, behold, the same baptizes, and all men come to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except he be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but I am sent from him. He that hath the bride, bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. So John recognized that, yes, you got Jesus. He's the, he's the bridegroom. And Jesus has come for his church, for those that believe on him. And we are the bride of Christ. So we're his bride, as all the <laughs> believers from the time of John the Baptist to now are part of that bride of Christ. But John saw himself as he rightly was, the last of the Old Testament prophets, and the friend to the bridegroom. And someday we're going to all be in heaven and we're going to have this great wedding supper of the Lamb that when we all go to heaven and meet the Lord there in the air, then come back after that tribulation period and he begins that millennial reign, one of the first things he'll do then after he cleanses the temple and establishes the Old Testament economy again, then we'll have that great marriage supper of the Lamb, and there and that marriage supper will be the bride and the bridegroom and many guests. Amen. Verse 30, John the Baptist said, He must increase, but I must decrease. Whew. Man, and that's it. And that's the whole line right Amen. there. Is Jesus going to be increased in the incorporated church or is he decreased? Decrease. He must increase. I must decrease. Your man made business ways and you're incorporating the, the, the things of God in God's house. Oh, that might look logical. That might be the way the unsaved world says to go and for sure all the attorneys say it. Lost or saved. But that's not God's way. He that cometh from above is above all, and he that is of the earth is earthy, earthly, and speaketh of the earth. And he that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he hath seen and heard, that he testifieth, that no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony hath set to his seal that God is true. See, that's our authority. Amen. God is true. For he whom God has spoken sent speaketh the words of God for God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him the father loveth the son and hath given all things into his hand here it is he that believeth on the son hath everlasting life and he that believeth not the son shall not he that believeth not the son shall not see life but the wrath of God Biteth on him. <laughs> Isn't that awesome to think? See, John the Baptist was preaching the same thing that Jesus believed and taught. And John the Baptist was teaching and preaching even what John the Apostle preached and believed. Like he said in John 3 earlier. Mm -hmm. And it's a matter like Jesus said, but you goofball leaders of the Jews, you saw that change in them harlots and Sinners that John preached to, and you saw the change in her life, but you didn't want it. You thought you were so much better than that. You wouldn't repent. That's it. See, some people think, well, we've got to go by our logic. We know the church needs to be incorporated. That must be why Jesus cleansed the temple. Let's all stand by our heads in prayer. Father, thank you. What a message. Help us to act on it now. Meditate on it. Thanks for the Lord giving it and revealing it to us today. Because we sure never thought of it in that way before. And I hate to say I'm 70 years old and didn't really get it to the day. So thank you, Lord, for this great truth. Help us to act on it now. In Jesus' name, amen.